manager at Next Act Theater, and this is Tim. Hi, everyone. I'm Tim Motor. I'm a freelance uh, director of cinematographer in the Milwaukee area, but I work everywhere. Uh, cinematographer or director of photography is in charge of everything encompassing the visual aspect in terms of translating everything onto a film format, or in this case, digital format, because nobody pays for film anymore. So that's super exciting to me because um, in you know recent times, uh, theater has realized that we need cinematographers. We need people who know how to transfer acting or whatever kind of media we want to do onto film. So what, how did, how, who reached out to you and what did they describe to you is the job? If so <laughs> uh, David reached out to me, um, as you probably know, for the last probably two or three years, I've been uh, creating video trailers for most of next act uh, season shows. Morning to you. I've been thinking about those gates. Um, since I've been doing that, I have known David for a long time. He reached out to me about, hey, we want to do something for the Christians. We don't know 100% what that's going to look like yet. Can we talk? So without giving too much away about the show and maybe without giving too much away about what it's like now, because that might change. Can you tell us a little bit about the process as it is right now? The process has mostly been uh, exactly how I experience it in film, working with a director and a producer or a director and uh, you know a, an A-list actor that's you know signed on for a project and has you know some executive producer credit and we're trying to find the creative way to tell the story. A lot of what uh, cinematography encompasses is the lighting and composition uh, for that visual storytelling. You think think of that job as just visual storytelling. If you took the music out and turned the audio off, can you still understand the story? Um, all sorts of you know subtle tricks and techniques and conventions that have been invented over years and years and years, none of which I claim to be a supreme authority on, but I'm still learning myself. Um, but all those things that say, okay, here's how you can make a character look powerful. Here's how you can make a character look weak. Here's how you can make a character look very curious or small in the world or introspective. How do we apply that whole set of conventions to five actors who we might never ever be able to show in the same place at the same time. So the process has really been one of how do we maintain theatrical conventions? Can we not shoot it like a movie, but shoot it much more like a stage play? Just, you know, like you'd have three or four cameras filming a stage play that kind of went out the window when we learned we wouldn't be able to put most, if any, uh, if any of the actors, I think, again, there's some rules that we're still trying to figure out between um, current county COVID restrictions, uh, Screen Actors Guild requirements for sh putting something on film, equity rules for putting equity members together, um, and then producers, I, I don't know if uh, the Producers Guild worries about, you know, putting on a show to begin with. And that's all kind of changed. So the, the methodology so far has just been a lot of conversations about what can we do and what's our backup plan? Essentially, um, and I don't think I'm giving anything away, um, the whole play reads as a sermon. Um, and a sermon broken into parts given by different members of a congregation in their own way. So when we're talking about like jumping out and then coming back, if we, if we have a, a call back or a, and then somebody said, or a recounting of something in the past, but then we come back to our sermon, if we jump, if we have to jump out of our Hollywood squares, look, 
how can we come back to it without it feeling like we just cut two, we just took two different movies and tried to cut them together. Putting theater on film, but not making a film, but still, and still keeping it theatrical sounds like a really interesting creative challenge for you and everybody involved. It's a very fun challenge. Um, we want this to feel like a new creation, like this wasn't just a compromise of coverage. Um, but even if it is, like even if it ends up being, you have to sit at home and you have to record this piece and send it and then we're gonna edit it together, can Ed send them direction and can I send them framing notes, you know, line by line broken down. So when you're speaking, here's where I need you looking. Then I need you to slide it closer or slide it further away and look a different direction so that if we're not physically able to be there on set directing them and reframing the shot, we can give somebody those notes, they can send us a video and then we can edit it. So with the rules as they're changing, you might not even be able to be in the same room as an actor. Potentially. Wow. Well, I'm very excited for all of this. I'm very excited to see how it turns out. I know um, that we've got some really cool theatrical people working on it, but we wouldn't be able to transfer it to a screen without a really creative, smart cinematographer, director. Not I, appreciate, I appreciate the compliment. Thank you, Tim. Thanks, Grace. Thank you for your valuable, valuable time. Anytime. Anytime.